Hello everybody, we are discussing memory. In the last class, we looked at uh, static RAM. In today's class, we shall look at uh, dynamic RAM and after that, we shall discuss how memory expansion is possible by using multiple memory blocks. Okay? So, uh, we will start from DRAM, uh, dynamic RAM basics okay? and since the number of uh, uh, memory cell that can be put into a DRAM memory unit is quite large, the packing density is higher. So, the number of address line will be a bit uh, more for which to save pins we can uh, utilize multiple multiplexed addressing that part we shall see. Then we shall look at uh, memory cell by 4 transistor, 3 transistor and 1 transistor and uh, at the end we shall look at address and data range expansion. Right. So, uh, what we use in uh, design of dynamic RAM uh, based memory cell is that uh, the MOSFET by nature has infinite input impedance that we all know okay? uh, because it is a field effect device, it is not a current uh, control device like uh, uh, BJT. Right? So, the leakage current uh, at the gate is very small. So, the parasitic capacitance that would be there at the gate of the uh, MOSFET that can be used to store charge for a short, short time. Of course, there will be small leakage, okay, but for a short time it can be stored and that can be used for storing binary information. Okay. So, this capacitance acts as a memory cell and this provides us a simple circuit right, and uh, a higher packing density. Number of parts required becomes less okay, and the cost also per unit memory cell becomes much, much smaller. So, this is the strength of this approach. Of course, uh, as uh, we see in any design, uh, there is always a trade off. The trade off is that what we uh, uh, just noted that the capacitance, uh, though uh, the leakage is, uh, you know, the uh, uh, these uh, uh, can be uh, uh, is evidently small, but still it leaks. Okay? So, it requires periodic refreshing. Otherwise, the uh, sanity of the data, the data that is there will not be properly uh, you know uh, understood whether it is a 1 or a 0 okay, because the level will become uh, similar. Okay. So, that is one particular thing and this is called refreshing of cells. Okay. So, periodically of the order of millisecond it need to be refreshed okay. even when memory read or write operation is not taking place. Okay. So, that the previous value whatever it is it remains stored. Okay. This is one specific characteristics of DRAM okay, which was not there in SRAM for which the memory cycles that are there uh, the uh, timing cycles uh, for memory uh, read write operation becomes little bit different. Okay. I mean somewhat complicated compared to SRAM. Okay. Now, as I was telling that uh, it, it, it has it can pack a large number of memory uh, units uh, memory cells in one particular block okay, because of the simple nature of the circuit. So, uh, you can expect that for a particular memory uh, cell the number of address pins will be quite large okay, because uh, the uh, it is uh, whatever the number of memory cell. Uh, uh, log of that to the base 2 is the number of address pins, address bits, uh, address lines that will be required. So, when it becomes higher, okay, then the number of pins required to access the memory also becomes larger. Okay. Now, these uh, additional pins uh, that requires uh, higher cost. Okay. So, for which the concept that we can use uh, in some such uh, devices is the multiplexing of uh, address lines. Okay. So, here you can see one such example, one such example where we are trying to address 16 k into 1 okay, that kind of memory uh, block. So, this is that kind of memory block. right? So, 16 k means you need 
uh, 14 address, uh, you know, uh, pins, 14 address lines, 14 bit address. Okay. So, in this arrangement, what you can see that A0 to A6, the 7, okay, and A7 to A13, there is a stroke over there, both are fed through same uh, set of 7 pins. Okay, we do not have separate 14 address pins. We have only one common uh, set of 7 address pins by which both A0 to A6 and A7 to A13 are sent. Okay. So, when you send A0 to A6, right? so if, if you consider them as a row address, so this particular row address uh, select, this particular stroke okay, is exercised and that is uh, latched into this particular uh, uh, register. Okay. And then when you are sending A7 to A30, so this one will be at a different point of time of course. So, this column address select this particular input to this uh, column address latch that will be stroked and it will store that information. So, this is going to row address decoder and this is going to column address decoder and we have already noted the memory you know based addressing uh, scheme uh, matrix based addressing scheme before. So, this is the row address that will come okay, and this is the column address that will come and at the cross point there is the memory cell. Okay. So, what is happening now because of this that we are able to save 7 such pins, but uh, the address bits are uh, made available at different point of time. So, this is the multiplexing aspect of it. Okay. So, whenever the number of such pins requirement uh, becomes high because of higher packing density, we can think of some such way of addressing which is also known as multiplex addressing. Clear? Now, we look at one DRAM memory cell which is 4 transistor base. It is somewhat similar to what we had seen in case of uh, 6 transistor base uh, MOS based SRAM cell in the last class. Okay. So, there is some differences that we shall also tell. So, first of all, so this is the basic memory cell whatever you see over here. Okay. So, this is the basic memory cell. In SRAM based memories, uh, SRAM uh, using MOS, what we had? After this, we had a NMOS load connected to VDD. Okay. So, this was always connected. This was always connected and the transistors, these opposite transistors were acting as inverter and the memory cell was, uh, you know, uh, const, uh, was uh, uh, basically made up of this 6 transistor put together. right? So, in this case it is those load transistors are not there holding the cross coupled inverter in one particular state value. Rather the capacitances that are there which can store charges for a short time they are used in this particular case. Of course, as we have noted even when the memory is not read or written into so, it need to be refreshed for which a separate refresh lines are you know associated. Okay. So, let us see how it works. Right. So, the first of all the parasitic capacitances C1 and C2 they are used for storing of information. To start with we consider that Q1 on. So, this is the o, Q1 on is storage of 1 okay. and Q, Q1 on Q2 off and Q2 Q, uh, that is storage of 1 and Q1 off and Q2 on is storage of 0. So, that is the nomenclature that is what we are following. Okay. And that time C1 is this C1 is charged to VDD by some mechanism. So, these data lines or uh, all those things that we shall see during the you know writing process how it happens. So, this is charged to VDD. Okay, this is on and at that time this is charged to a low value, okay, low value, okay. So that will be the case because this is on means this is a low resistance path, right? So C O C two will be having a almost near about zero volt. Is it okay? So this is B D D and this is because this is on, so there is a path that is available, okay? So if not accessed means this X is low, Y is also low, so that means this is 
isolated from the rest of the circuit. So, it will maintain this value okay, if these capacitances are not leaking. So, C1 it, it, it will maintain its value, C2 will maintain its value. This is at VDD and this is at 0 volt. Okay. But as we have noted that it C1 charge which is which is charged up to VDD, it will gradually leak and it will come closer to the C2 value, then the information will be lost. Okay. So, before it uh, loses significantly, it whatever charge it has there with it, okay, we need refreshing. Is it fine? And for refreshing, then what we do? We need to re recharge the capacitor okay. and for which what we consider here this x we make high right? and this refresh r input we make high. right? So, at that time what is happening? So, this is high, this is high, this is high. So, this is on, this is on, this is on, this is on. Okay. These transistors are providing path to this VDD. Okay. So, what will happen? So, this VDD will get the path over here to charge the C1. Is it all right? Okay. Because Q2 is off, because Q2 is off, so the path available over here is this. Is it fine? And at that time, what will happen? What about this path? So, VDD there is a path over here, but this particular path, this Q, Q1 is on, right. So, it will go through this, uh, you know, a low resistance path over here and for which the C2 will remain at, uh, you know, low voltage only. Is it okay? Because it is getting bypassed when this is on. So, before it appreciably falls, we need to do this refreshing. Is it all right? So, all the rows, all the cells in a particular row okay, to which x is connected, so they get refreshed to, you know, uh, together okay, by this particular line. So, this is the refreshing uh, act that is happening in a at a periodical periodic interval okay, even when read or write operations are not taking place. Fine. Next, let us see how the write and read operation takes place in this particular cell. Right? Refresh, we have understood. So, what we see, this is the uh, you know the control block. This control block is similar to what uh, is there in the NMOS based uh, SRAM uh, that we discussed in the last class. Okay? This particular particular block is similar. Okay? this block is different. Okay, the control logic part remains uh, as it was for SRAM, okay, which we did not discuss in that detail, but we can apply this particular block there also and understand how it works. Right. So, coming back, uh, so for the right operation, this block and this block comes into picture. Right. So, at that time, of course, this cell need to be accessed. So, x is high, so row address select and y is high. So, for which this transistor is on and this transistor is on, this transistor is on and this transistor is on. Is it okay? Right. So, now this is the data and this data bar line. Right. So, this gets a path, this gets a path from here through it because these transistors are on, okay, like this, right, to come here. Similarly, this address gets a path over here, okay, sorry, like this to come here up to this point. Is it clear? So, in the right operation, so this particular one is high, so this is on, so this is on, right. So, if D in is low, right, so if this is low, then this transistor will be off. So I put a cross mark means of and then D in bar will be high. Okay. So, this is this will be on. So, at that time what happens if this is off? Okay. So, this is the transistor is used as a load. So, this will be high right? and this will be this one is on means there is a path available this is also on this Q 17 is also on. So, this will be low. right? 
So, at that time you are forcing from external uh, uh, you know this through this data line okay, a high over here and a low over there. Okay. So, what would happen because of this right. So, this high and this is low. So, this C 1 okay, will uh, become low because this is low and this is high. So, that will charge C 2 to high is it clear right it is being forced externally through the data lines. So, that is what is happening right and whatever charge C 1 has now C 2 has become high. So, Q 2 is now becoming on right. So, it will get discharged through this right through this is it clear right. So, that way earlier Q 1 was on the consideration that we had uh, with which we had started the discussion. Now, this Q 1 becomes off and Q 2 becomes on. So, earlier we considered Q 1 on means a storage of uh, uh, 1. Now, Q 1 become off. So, it is now storage of 0. Okay. So, whatever data d in that was low right. So, low that has been communicated that has been uh, you know uh, included now in the memory cell. Is it fine? So, this is the way data. So, similar thing it is symmetric in nature if d in is high similar thing will happen for the other side from the other side. So, this side will be high and this side will be low corresponding transistors will be you know on or off and uh, you know the data writing will take place accordingly clear. Now, what happens to read operation? Uh, uh, so, during read operation this input will be low ok this is low ok. So, this is off right. So, if this is off means this does not get a path in this direction right. So, and also this d input is not in consideration right. So, at that time your of course, this this is accessed this is accessed. So, this is on ok this y is high and x is high. So, this is on and this is also on these two are also on ok. So, this is the cell being addressed ok. Now, if the uh, C 2 is low, say so C 2 is low, okay. so C 2 is low that means C 1 is high, okay. so Q 1 is on. Okay. So, what will happen at that time? So, this V G Q 3, right. so this is your uh, Q 13, so this is your 13. Okay, this is the read amplifier and this is the 14, this is the uh, another read amplifier. Okay. So, at that time what has happened if, if this is low, it is low right. So, this low will come through this right and so this is low over here, this is low over here. So, this is the inverter configuration ampli amplifier. So, this will be a d out will be high right. So, this is high at that time. Okay. So, C 2 low that is Q 1 on. So, D out you see as high right and at that time what will happen to this line. So, C 1 is high uh, 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 C, right and uh, Q 2 is off. So, this high comes over here. Okay. So, this high comes over here through this data line and comes to this point. So, this is high. So, this transistor is on right Q 14 is on. So, this output is low. Okay. So, this is the way data is read from the cell fine. Now, uh, looking at uh, the other two uh, DRAM cell configuration memory cell configuration with uh, lower number of parts. So, one is uh, three transistor configuration. So, here what you can see that this is the parasitic capacitance between the a grate over here and the ground that is there which is used for storing the information right. When the C is fully charged ok. So, this voltage is high. So, this Q 2 will be on right and then this ground is getting a path over here. So, D out will be low and if it is low then it is off and this D out will be D out bar will be high ok. So, if just opposite things is available. So, if it is high 
this is low, this is low, this is high. So, that is why it is D out bar that is has been mentioned over here. And uh, for writing, right, so then this is uh, W is on, okay. So, at that time this D in, if it is low, so it will be low, and if it is high, then capacitor will be charged to high value, okay. So, this is the way it works over here. And for one transistor, uh, this is the uh, memory cell, okay. So, this is a capacitor, this is not uh, uh, you know the uh, parasitic capacitor we were talking about, this is an external capacitor which is storing the information, uh, this one bit information, right. And uh, so, this is the uh, y address line and this is the x address line, okay. So, this column line that you see is also data line, okay. So, which increases you know uh, packing density further. That, but there is a catch we shall see, right. Uh, so, when uh, x is high and y is high, so both of them are high, okay. So, whatever is the value of the C1 that gets sensed when the read operation is done, okay. So, this is the way it is sensed. So, if it is low, then it is sensed as low, if it is high, it is sensed as high. There are some more issues which we shall uh, uh, now shortly discuss. So, that is the read operation and the write operation, of course, when both of them are high. So, from this side, okay. So, this is from the right amplifier, the uh, this one, this transistor is on, this transistor is on, right. This uh, C 1 gets charged according to low or high value that is coming from the uh, right amplifier, okay. So, this is the way uh, this uh, uh, memory cell is storing information high or low, okay. Now, regarding the uh, other issues that are there with this arrangement, okay. So, here there is a parasitic, large parasitic capacitance that occurs as C 2, okay, over here. Remember this is column line, so many such lines will be in parallel, right. Um, uh, many such, uh, you know, cells will be addressed, okay, by this particular line. So, many such uh, capacitance, I am sorry, they will be in parallel. So, that will increase the effective capacitance value of it, which is roughly uh, you know 10 times more than this capacitance value. So, whenever you read it, okay, because of the charge uh, sharing, charge dividing that is happening, this charge coming over here, okay, so it becomes a destructive reading. So, this inform charge information here, it gets lost. So, after every read, you need to have a restoration, okay, restoration of whatever previous value was there in this C 1. So, this is an uh, additional thing, though the dens density is more, less number, less, least number of parts are used. So, this is a one transistor configuration, okay. And the other issue with this uh, uh, one uh, is that for reading, uh, it is preferred that uh, you uh, pre-charge this particular data line, the column line to high value, okay. So, that means, this capacitance etcetera is already, already pre-charged. Now, after that Whenever this x is becomes high, I mean this particular cell is becoming uh, getting accessed, okay. Then depending on the value of C1 which is low or high, so there will be small increase or small decrease in this particular value, okay, over here in this reading. So, that difference is actually getting sensed, okay. So, this is uh, the other way of uh, you know reading this particular thing. So, that is also something which we consider uh, in this case, but it provides the maximum density, okay. So, uh, we now move, move to uh, this uh, memory expansion and when we uh, talk about memory expansion, there are two possibilities. One is uh, the address range expansion, okay. So, what do we mean by that? So, there is an example. So, this is uh, Uh, this is the number of rows, okay, that number of addresses, number of locations that is 1024 and each in uh, in each address there are 4 bits of uh, binary uh, information is stored. So, 4 bit word is there. So, when we talk about address range expansion, so it remains 4, but now we want 4096, okay, 4k uh, uh, number of memory uh, you know uh, locations 
available for the designer ok. So, how we can do that if we have a 4k cross 4 memory which is fine you can directly use, but if you have 1k uh, cross 4 like this right what you can do to expand the address range which originally is meant for 1k address ok 1k you know memory locations. So, to do that one uh, mechanism that you can see over here. So, 1k means 10 address lines will be there ok 2 to the power 10 is 1024 ok and 4k means 12 address lines will be there. So, uh, you, you take 4 such 1k units. So, this is 1, one unit 2 3 4 ok and the lower uh, this 10 bits a 0 to a 9 which is uh, you know uh, they are as address bit inputs to each one of these 4. So, you make it common. So, you connect it to all of them ok. So, higher 2 bits a 11 and a 10 you pass it through a 2 to 4 decoder to generate 4 such lines. So, 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 ok and then that you connect to chip select lines of each one of them right. So, what does it mean when 0 0 is placed here a 11 and a 10 right. So, this particular block will be selected and not not the others one other ones. So, if this is 0 0 if this is 0 0 and this address a 0 to a 9 is all 0. So, basically you are accessing the location 0 0 0 in hex ok. So, all of them are 0 that particular location is accessed you can read there from there or you can write into ok depending on what operation you are doing ok. So, if you now change this a 9 to a 0 to 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 ok. So, this 0 becomes a 1. So, it will happen. So, you will be reading from location 0 0 1 that is in hex ok. From that location you will be reading or writing right. So, because this is remaining this 2 a 11 and a 10 remaining constant at 0 0. So, whatever you do with the rest of the a 0 to a 9 bit ok that is happening over here in this particular block ok. And how much you can, can go ahead with this? So, all becoming 1 a 0 to a 9. So, that is your 3 f f ok that is your 3 f f that you can read in hex means group of 4 ok. So, this address will be available here right. So, next if it is 0 1 so 0 1 this a 11 to a 10. So, this is what will be considered right this decoder output will be considered. So, accordingly this chip will be selected rest are not selected ok. So, when this one is 0 1 and rest all these a 9 to a 0 is 0. So, basically you are locating the first address ok of this particular uh, memory block. So, that is 4 0 0 according to this expanded address range ok and last address over will be 7 f f. Similarly, this one will be 8 0 0 and last address will be v f f and this is c 0 0 and this will be f f f. Is it clear? So, that is the way we can increase the address range. Coming to data range expansion. So, the number of address bits remain same ok data bit we want to increase. So, here is an example. So, this is 7 port IC 7 port 201 is a 256 cross 1 uh, you know memory block memory IC. So, that means 256 addresses are there in each address location only one bit uh, information can be stored ok on one bit information is there. And we want 256 cross 4 what will it do ok we shall put 4 of them in parallel as you see over here right and we the address line will make common and it will feed same address line right. So, anyone now invoke the a particular address. So, each one of them will be you know uh, invoked it, it should each uh, the first location for each one of them will be addressed right and uh, then you can write or read from uh, each one of them ok depending on your control inputs ok and each one will give you 1 bit of information and together you get 4 bit of information. Yeah, simple ok. Now, if you want both address and data range expansion right whatever we have learnt uh, just now we shall put them together. 
So, one such example over here say 256 cross 1. So, that means that uh, example of 74201 which is 256 cross 1 memory cell and uh, that is there and we want uh, a memory uh, which is 1024 cross 8 using it. Okay. Then what we shall do? Right? We need to uh, you know increase the address range otherwise uh, also increase the data range. So, address range right. So, which was uh, to start with 256 means 8 bit address was there and 1024 means 10 bit address will be there. So, for this additional 2 bits we will be having a, so this is a 224 decoder sorry, okay. will be there 224 right. So, it will be generating 4 addresses the way we had seen before right and in each location I will 1201 provides 1 bit of you know uh, uh, binary information and we want 8. So, 8 such will be there d naught to d 7 right. So, 4 such rows which is expanding the data uh, address range the way we have uh, configured it and 8 such columns increasing the data range. So, 4 into 8 32 such okay, uh, memory blocks of IC 74201 will be required to get this one is it fine. And this memory block could be any of SRAM, DRAM type, I mean, depending on whatever you are using. Okay. So, with this, we come to the conclusion of this particular class. What we have seen that dynamic RAM made from MOSFET uh, stores charge, uh, stores uh, information in the form of charge, uh, which is available at the uh, uh, gate capacitance, uh, parasitic in nature. Uh, because of the leakage, uh, it requires uh, refreshing to replenish the lost charge. Okay. Larger sized memory, we uh, uh, can do better by multiplexed uh, row column addressing, which saves uh, pins, number of pins that would be required for the memory IC. And uh, we had seen how 4 uh, transistor DRAM memory cell, 3 transistor memory DRAM memory cell and 1 transistor DRAM memory cell works okay, and uh, they are uh, you know uh, specific characteristics and further we have noted that address uh, range and data range of uh, memory can be expanded by using additional units okay, and decoder for uh, increasing the uh, data range and uh, also using chip select unit uh, together. Okay. Thank you.